Is it a rebuilding year for the Lynch? Nobody told Nafisa Collier that. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi there, everyone, and welcome to Lockdown Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Megdahl, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. We continue to break listenership records month after month here at Lockdown Women's Basketball. Six days a week, we cover the past, present, future of the game. So delighted you are with us and making us your first listen every day. And of course, it's not just me, it's the incredible group. Over at the next, the nextsoups.com, where we're going to have over a hundred reported pieces every single month. Once again, here in June, we are breaking that number. We have somebody in all 12 WNBA markets covering the game. Make sure you subscribe $9 a month, $72 a year, the next hoops.com. And our fearless reporter in Minnesota is Terry Horseman, who's doing great work, but Terry's going to have to answer for some really significant, important questions. And that is to say that the Minnesota Lynx, by all accounts, are supposed to be missing the playoffs, going into the lottery, and getting Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, somebody. I mean, Caitlin Clark was a Lynch fan growing up. Paige Beckers was a season ticket holder. But they're making the same mistake that the play did in the producers. They went out and won 104 to 93 last night over the Seattle storm. Terry, what's going wrong that's allowing things to go so right? Uh, I love the producer's reference, Howard. I guess it's a springtime for uh, Cheryl and Nafisa. No, oh, no. I, I, when, <laughs> um, th- that is like kind of uh, the, the narrative that was, I believe, you know, pre-assigned uh, during the, the season. But yeah. I, when we were, I was on a, uh, uh, with Jackie recapping the WNBA draft, and we're just sort of talking about whether the Lynx won the draft and if it would affect this season, if it would affect seasons down the road. Uh, what were sort of the ripples of them having a what was widely seen as a successful night uh, back in April? Oh. And we were just talking about that, so the expectations being different. And I just kind of paused and said, Is anyone really going to? be that surprised if a team with Cheryl Reeve and Nafisa Collier makes the WNBA playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of felt like everyone had uh, written that off. And I still don't know totally what my expectations are, but I think, um, you know, at, when the season started and they lost their first six games, everyone's like, okay, you can pencil in the links to be in last place. But I think when you sort of look at um, the, um, you know, the, be, 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 be behind the curtain a little bit and actually see sort of the way like those games played out. Um, a lot of them were figuring things out. And one of those players was Diamond Miller. Uh, no no was, doubt. Yeah. And, and I do want to say in, in, in segment one here, we're going to talk a lot about Diamond. Segment two mm-hmm. is mostly going to be Nafisa Collier based and mm-hmm. uh, we have a lot to get into on both of those. But, you know, to, to your point, and um, I, 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 I'm a great poet, once said, right, a kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but Diamond Miller is a girl's best friend, right? And I'm <laughs> paraphrasing, but, uh, right. you know, seeing her back and seeing her not just score the way she did, but to do so on eight of 13 from the field, uh, and she had, I believe, four rebounds and five assists, if uh, memory serves, you know, just doing a little bit of everything, coming back from injury. And it's one thing to say, all right, the Lynch are who they are this year, but to not take into account that this was Diamond Miller, who A, was learning, and then B, has been missing for the past few weeks, it feels like it's an incomplete accounting of what the Lynch can be. Yeah, absolutely. And I think no one is really shocked to see Diamond do the things she did last night in that win against Seattle. But for her to have been that good, that fast, coming uh, off the injury, uh, it even if she was completely healthy. It's at least, you know, you'd see expect some rust after uh, nearly a month off, Mm -hmm. but 
she was fantastic right away. And they, the Lynx came out and had their best quarter of the season offensively in the first quarter of that game. And Diamond's pacing was a big part of it. So that, that really showed what they've been missing. Uh, was there any the conversation about her? On a, you know, I know uh, Rachel Dowden, the great Rachel Dowden, had a tweet about yeah. minutes restriction. Um, yeah. She played 31 minutes. Yeah, so, she played. There's a minutes restriction, and then she played her career high in minutes in, in the W. Um, we talked about that a little bit, I think, um, just by like the the way the game played out dictated a little bit more uh, of Diamond. But yeah, Cheryl said that team owner Chuck Barda at one point, I believe it was the fourth quarter, maybe then the third quarter, came to her and said, we have to get Diamond off the court for at least a little bit. Um, and yeah, and there was a weird, there was an odd substitution at one point where um, in the third quarter where Diamond was coming out for uh, Carlton mm -hmm. and it looked like Carlton got to the scores table to check in right away, but the refs, you know, said something that they, that it wasn't in time or something. And diamond played for another stretch and that ended up being in like two minutes instead of, you know, sometimes that's 10 seconds. Sometimes it's two minutes. And I think it ended up being a little bit longer and diamond had to play until that uh, quarter timeout. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so 31 minutes was not the plan, um, but you know, it, it worked out and uh, yes. So yeah, it was a great, great night for her. She has played now in six games, which is a little small when it comes to a sample size to be able to get a sense of it. But what she did last night, and again, the other thing that really stands out to me is the level of praise you are hearing about her from Cheryl. Cheryl is not somebody who is necessarily quick to praise rookies early on and holds them to a higher standard. Uh, reminds me a lot, honestly, of the way Gina Oriema talks about freshmen at University of Connecticut and right. pushes them to do that. She seems all in on Diamond right away. Is that your impression as well up close? Yeah, I, I think that's something that's been uh, consistent from Cheryl since uh, since the draft. And mm -hmm. Well, being completely honest, you know, she's something we knew Diamond was an exceptional athlete and really fun player to watch. Anyone who watched her at Maryland knows that. <laughs> um, but right, right off the bat, she wouldn't hold back on um, not, you know, negative side, but just talk about uh, Diamond making, you know, rookie mistakes and right. uh, the the need to to be coachable and that she she is coachable. Um, so that comes out anytime, you know, we she praises, you know, the pace or, or the finishing at the rim. Um, you know, I see the whole league uh, <clears throat> through the, through, through Link's glasses, but um, I, I think she's already one of the most exciting North and South players uh, in, in the league. And uh, when she gets close to the basket, she's had a couple of welcome to the WNBA moments uh, in, in those, in those uh, six games. Um, but yeah, she's a lethal finisher at the rim. And so like having that part figured out already, um, it's not <laughs> easy to understand how uh, excited a coach can be about that, but she's always mentioned how coachable of a player that she is. Mm -hmm. And during training camp, diamond be sort of being attached to fee at the hip, just trying to be a sponge and taking as much, uh, knowledge as uh, she possibly can. So she definitely has the coachable trait down as well. You know, in much the same way that the Statue of Liberty is a gift from France to the United States, to my mind, Cheryl and now Diamond is gifts from the state of New Jersey to Minnesota. Yeah. Something <laughs> that I take a lot of pride in as a New Jersey native. And I, exactly. I, we, we, we have a lot of thanks to send New Jersey's way. You do, okay. you do. I, 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 as does the world. But, you know, two other things mm -hmm. on Diamond before we jump into some of the other players, too, that really stand out to me. And one of them is the fact that as early as it is in her career, she is already seeing the court and finding her teammates at an elevated level. Assist percentage of 22.5 for somebody six games into her WNBA career strikes me as a very big deal, especially for a team like the Lynch. And we've talked about this where point guard has been a bit of a challenge for, um, let me see, I'm just looking at my watch. Uh, five years since Lindsay Whalen retired, right? <laughs> About that, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't have a calculator with me, but um, I do think that it, that is something um, that you know fans have wondered about uh, since since the great Lindsay Whalen um, call, call it a career. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think that um, Cheryl, you know, I think early uh, maybe it's just after the the 
first preseason game. Uh, Diamond had a really good good game uh, in her first preseason WNBA game as well. And Cheryl said, you know, Diamond makes uh, a ton of mistakes, but is super eager to correct those mistakes. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, she's made a lot of, you know, th those types of plays, you know, that you expect out of a rookie. Um, but I think she is the type of player where when she does like commit a lot of turnovers or has a turnover heavy game, like it happened a couple of times in those first six, in those first five games, um, you see her correct those pretty, pretty yeah. quick. And uh, it's almost like any time she creates a turnover, like her, her court vision goes up after just being aware of that mistake and what ended with that mistake. So I think you saw that. I, I think... <laughs> she must have been just the best, you know, student of the game over these past, you know, three and a half weeks, just ha forced to be on the sidelines and sort of look at everything from 30,000 feet. Uh, sure. It, it killed her not to be out there, but I think it, it, you know, forced her to sit back and uh, look at those plays um, f further, further back. And I think, you know, there's, there, there's can be a benefit uh, uh, to, you know, that, that stretch of time. No doubt about it. And, and again, to that turnover percentage, it's 7.1%, which is virtually Elena Deladon-esque. I mean, it, it's it's <laughs> right. not a number that you normally associate with a rookie. And and again, even more so to do this during the time that Jessica Shepard is out. Jessica Shepard right. is essentially the Nebraska Alyssa Thomas at 22.4%. Diamond is now just above her, uh, which really right. strikes in and of itself. So we're going to get into uh, what that has meant for the rest of the team, including, of course, the great Nafisa Collier, who was just doing things nobody had any reason to expect from her just back off of a pregnancy. But Locked on Women's Basketball is brought to you by eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the, the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. And when we think about the right fit for the Minnesota Lynx, I mean, really since the moment she was drafted sixth overall, in the 2019 draft, it's hard to argue that Nafisa Collier has been anything less. But what she did last night, putting up that career high, it just seemed like she got 33, but she could have gotten whatever she wanted. Take me through what you saw from her. Right. And it felt this past stretch of her has been fantastic. I mm -hmm. think all of us, you know, were, uh, you know, hopeful and expecting to see, you know, uh, you know, feed back back to her old self. Uh, she she had mentioned you know feeling feeling great and feeling confident um, as, as far back as February during that uh, USA basketball camp that took place here in Minneapolis. Um, I don't know that we thought that she would be you know top you know all star level top five scorer <laughs> in in the league uh, uh, this fast, and that's exactly where she's been. Um, so last night uh, at the beginning of the game, it, it, it felt like it would, she would get a game where she would get her 20, um, you know, another like good rebounding game. Uh, but it kind of felt like it'd be more of uh, a diamond game and more of a K-Mac game uh, mm -hmm. go, in, in the early going. And both those players still ended up with 18. But in that second half, uh, Fee got just whatever she wanted. I think it was she had 12 third quarter points and 12 fourth quarter points. And I think nine of those fourth quarter points came in the first, you know, 120 seconds of of the fourth quarter um and uh they, they seattle was playing great defense on her for the most part and she was just getting whatever she wanted um those uh you know fade, fade away uh shots off the block were you know just money uh every single time um so i think it's a matter of you know her being being confident and sticking with what works um but last night just 
a little bit of uh, catching fire um, as well. And had they kept going to fee, mm-hmm. uh, like that, I, that the 40 was well within, you know, the realm of possibility uh, last night, but other players are playing great too. And she was getting people involved and uh, Lindsay Allen uh, talk about the point guard position. We can, we can't talk about the links without talking about the point guard position. Um, sure. Lindsay, Lindsay Allen, who's had, you know, a great, you know, three, four game stretch uh, had, was moving the ball really well last night and getting a lot of people involved. So I do think had it been like, hey, fee get 40, um, she could have gone out and done it. But yeah, there was uh, Seattle's doing a good job on her and it wasn't making a difference. She was excellent early on and to take nothing away from what she has been early on and really all season and since the calendar turned to June. I just want to run through these because they are mind-blowing numbers. Right. First of all, she's averaging 35.2 minutes per game. So in the same way that Diamond was not technically on a minutes restriction per se, very clearly Fee is not on any kind of minutes restriction. And I, I know Cheryl always battles this, right? There's this, all right, on the one hand, her best players – and, you know, for years she talked about, like, oh, I got a limit still. And then Sylvia Fowles is so important and she's out there. But, you know, Fee is out there almost every moment of the game. It's not slowing her down late, as you pointed out. She's shooting 52% from the field, 37.5% from three on almost four attempts, 871 from the free throw line in the month of June. <clears throat> I mean, she's going to be in that conversation for player of the month. total rebounds per game, 24.7 points per game. So she's doing it with efficiency and volume at the same time. Look, she did not get voted as an all-star starter. I can tell you this media voter, I did vote for her as a WNBA all-star starter. I believe it. I believe she's one of the six best front court players in the league this year. And, when you just think about what it means, okay, you know, and this goes back to Diamond, sort of the same question, right? Rebuilding, no, per se, but do you have a number one option? Do you have a number two option on a championship team? It's real early to say that for Diamond. To me, I think the question's been answered about whether Nafisa Collier is a potential number one option on a championship team. Do you think there's yeah, any kind of remaining question about that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I I may have a little bit of a question if if the if he can fill that offensive role hmm. uh, the same way you know Maya did uh, for right. for all the all those championship teams. Uh, that's it's it's a big question. Yeah. Um, but I think um, I I think you convinced me, um, especially with with the, the with those latest numbers. Well, um, I, I mean, just and, to that point, and just to jump on it a, a little bit, right? right? You need several number one mm-hmm. options in this league. Sure, yeah. like, if you're competing with New York, you're competing competing with a team with Stewie and JJ mm-hmm. and Sabrina. And if you're competing with Las Vegas, you're competing with a team that has Asia Wilson and Jackie Young, who's played at an MVP level, sure, yeah. and Chelsea Gray. And, you know, I, I mean, you can't just do it. Not that the links of that championship era were just Maya. My point being sure. that I, I, I'd almost use a different comparison, right? You think about the Indiana fever getting to the WNBA finals in 2015 and winning in 2012. And Tamika Catchings is the clear number one option. But, I mean, is it Marissa Coleman in 2015? Is it Brie uh, in January in 2015? Like, they really did have that one. You need several. But can Fee be a one among ones? I think she can be. I th- Fee can be a one among ones for sure. Um, and, I, you know, I think that is sort of where the, the, the league has – gone over, over these last number of years certainly this year when you start thinking about coming up with a formula to be right. new york slash vegas 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 more so uh, at this point mm-hmm. um, but yeah i do think one among ones for sure and i think she's proving that she can be a one uh a, a, you know a one full stop um as, as well and if that second option is is a diamond doing what she did last night? I know it's, you know, Cheryl was very quick to, you know, 
not tampered down any enthusiasm after the game, but just you see rookies, uh, you know, Dorka U.S., who I know we'll talk about, had a great game last night as well. Right. Um, where she's like, you see this all the time, you know, with rookies where they have these sensational performances and then the next game it's, damn, they're rookies. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I think we we definitely all want to sort of uh, not, um, you know, not not get excited, but sort of temper the uh, expectations with that. I mean, especially since it's only been one game back. Uh, right. And they'll have a game against the same Seattle team uh, t- tomorrow night on Thursday night in Seattle. Um, which will be, you know, I, th- I think that's a very interesting, you know, scheduling to sort of see her go uh, up against the same exact team two times in a row and see how they adjust uh, to her and how they, what they do to sort of maybe throw off that pacing and that, you know, North and South playmaking that she brings. So um, Thursday, I think that will be, you know, a very, um, not telling, but just very interesting game to see how uh, she reacts and also see how that ankle holds up after playing a career high 31 minutes in, in, in Two and three days. That's right. That's yeah. exactly it. And seeing how they adjust and a uh, Noel Quinn certainly knows what she's doing out there. So it will be fascinating to see, but in terms of Dorka Juhas and mm-hmm. some of the, let's say ancillary players that we're seeing, you know, I, there were wide ranging opinions about whether Dorka could even make a roster. And Mm -hmm. I am delighted that I am on record early and often saying that's a skill set that's naturally going to translate. Even for me, for somebody who has been very much on the Dorka train for a long time, seeing her start, put up double doubles, you know, right here, right away, this is early. So again, you know, and, and like you said, and, and Cheryl has talked about rookies have this ebb and flow and, and Cheryl's seen a couple of them, you know, in her time in the league. So she certainly knows from where she speaks. But what do you think is the floor for what Dorka can be before you even think about her as a ceiling? Yeah, I mean, I think we're we've seen the we're seeing the floor and it's a pretty, pretty darn high floor. Uh, she seems to be. Yeah a player that's gets getting better and better all the time. Um, so she was another player that, you know, you talk about Cheryl and Gino being coaches who, you know, aren't going to just fawn over rookies um, right, right away. Uh, but I, I, I noticed it early on that she, you know, was talked about Dorka in a way that really complimented all that Dorka had accomplished before now, you know, playing, uh, professionally in Hungary, uh, as well as playing um, for some, you know, uh, some great college basketball programs. Uh, just a maturity was a b- word used early and often in, in describing Dorka. So while I think, you know, there is uh, a lot for her to learn, I think she is learning a lot and, uh, you know, keep keeping it in. Um, she's getting better every single game. And uh, last last night was her first double double, and I had to double check just to make sure that I was like, really, I thought, uh, you know, she had had done that already because it just she feels like a pro uh, in so many stretches. She doesn't look like a rookie, and I think she's barely scratching the surface. Um, and I think that was visible just like first day of training camp. You know, the not just the way she played, like the way you know she spoke to media. Like you could tell this is a this is a person who has had you know extensive media training already. Um, this is just a person who has. Uh, has has some wisdom uh, beyond beyond their uh, you know twenty three years um, uh, on earth. So um, I think she is another player to be you know really um, excited about. And uh, you mentioned you know all this stuff happening when the calendar turned over to June. Uh, mm-hmm. We ran our feature uh, at the next on Dorka about being a, a player wise beyond her years and a, a real coup uh, for, for this draft class uh, for this year and beyond on May 28th. So the next was early on the Dorka train um, for in, in, all, in all kinds of ways. I think, you know, we, we saw it, um, even though it wasn't necessarily showing up in box scores, you could just sort of tell like the way that she played, you know, and she had a matchup with uh, Alyssa Thomas early. <laughs> and that it was one of the earlier games of the year Minnesota played Connecticut and she didn't flinch. And uh, the links, the links, lots, they've lost both times. They played Connecticut, but you've seen Dorka, you know, go toe to toe in those matchups and not hesitate. So um, she's only going to get better and fill, you know, a really important role as a post player for the links, which, you know, you can't talk about the post this year 
Uh, I know Sylvia Fowles retired, but how much we've talked about her and had a, a whole weekend celebrating her, uh, the Fowles shadow, I think, would be really intimidating for any young post player. And that hasn't affected her in the slightest. I think that she's been excited about that, about still being around and getting to learn from her. So uh, she's a, just a very, very impressive player in uh, all the different ways. You you have to be happy when Sylvia Fowles is around, but it also just yeah it's default. But <laughs> hey, right? I I I mean it, it's just it, she's someone who brings joy into every room, as as mm-hmm. you know. But the other part of that, of course, is that Sills rim protection. If you go back and look, the people north of three percent block percentage last year uh, who played any sort of significant minutes was basically just Sill. And so Sill mm-hmm. leaving the fact that Dork is a three point four. Uh, the fact, and I know this was a critical part of why Minnesota wanted Dorka, not just that she's six five, she's six five, five with the enormous wingspan that extends beyond six foot five uh, right. considerably, and that gap is really important when you're looking at young prospects and something I know Minnesota looks at. Uh, you could see again the skill set, the player, the person. There's a fit. You're not asking her to be Sylvia Fowles. You can't ask anybody to be literally right. five in the history of the league. And I will go to war on that fact any day of the week but uh it is really significant to see what she's doing so listen terry they're blowing it they're really on pace it looks like right now to make the playoffs you know what do you what do you do about that how do you when you have a really good young core and you have a superstar coming and you have a hall of fame quality coach and gm you know are there any ways to sabotage it you know i i or are they just on track to make the playoffs now and there's nothing that they can do about that unfortunate reality <laughs> um yeah i think that's just sort of where where we we are at naturally um i like i mm-hmm. mentioned it's a hall of fame coach and i don't think you can put fee in the hall of fame yet but at this pace she's she's certainly going to Get ahead there, and I kind of uh, like a, in that episode with Jackie. Um, if we didn't know how quick uh, Fee would get back to an All Star level, yeah. um, I think you can certainly make the argument as as you did that she should have been included in the All Star starters. Mm-hmm. Um, if you ask, you know, Cheryl, she, it, I think the Lynx had played thirteen games when that voting <laughs> voting closed, so kind of a little wild to be deciding All Stars uh, with a thirteen game uh, sure. sample size. Um, and yeah, I, I think um, it is, uh, you know, from a fan standpoint, of course, you know, they're looking up, looking at the standings, looking at lottery odds, just sort of doing the, the mental gymnastics and, and the math that will, that will drive you crazy. Um, but, you know, Cheryl made it clear, you know, the links are never going to come out and tank. Um, right. And there's in the, in the, the, the language that was, you know, uh, around preseason was, you know, she said, you know, we do have a, a long view. Um, it is it is a, a new era and um, it is the expectations have, have shifted. So I don't think it's a, a playoffs or bust uh, mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she wants to <laughs> build another championship contender uh, the, the right way, um, in, in her words. Um, but yeah, she just she has this team playing well and has them playing well in the stretch without Ariel Powers, uh, without Jessica Shepard, now without Tiffany Mitchell uh, and Miss Diamond for, for, for a stretch. So if you had, <laughs> to- with just the knowledge of the future and didn't talk about results or anything, if you had told fans like, oh, these players are going to miss these amount of games uh, early to mid-season, you'd be like, oh, okay, the team's probably 2-12 and 12, and we're all just watching Caitlin Clark and Paige Becker's highlights. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and reminding everyone that both of them grew up Lynx fans, everybody. Um, but I had heard you know, that. Yes. Yeah, there's a a lot of basketball to be played, and you know that you know Cheryl is one of the winningest coaches uh, ever for for reasons. That's winning games. Um, yeah. And it would be to not go for it would be a detriment to not only the building the young talent like Diamond and Dorka, um, but also just. Uh, the, the the vets and players who are there, like the FISA is still getting better. Um, so it, there's also an opportunity in the schedule. And before we go, I, I, I want to talk about it because it's significant. Like you said, Thursday night at Seattle, then mm-hmm. at Phoenix and the Mercury are just, as you know, just let um, Vanessa Nygaard yeah. coach and are a mess right now. 
home against Indiana, the Fever are very good. And I, I'm on record. They are, yeah. I think the Fever are a playoff team this year, and mm-hmm. that is looking better than ever. But yeah. again, at home against the Fever, an opportunity followed by at home against Phoenix. The Las Vegas Aces are a huge test, of course, but they also stand out amid a, 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 a schedule first half that closes home against Dallas. Wins have been very up and down so far this year. If you're a playoff team, you should expect to beat the wins at home, right? You know, they're sort yep. of right in that group that's going to be fighting, I feel like, five through nine. And so from that perspective, by the All-Star break, it feels like we're going to have a really good sense of what the Lynch are capable of being this year. Do you see it that way also? I do see it that way. And I think this game in Seattle, uh, you know, they're, they're all, the games are all big, <laughs> obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, but is is really fascinating because the Lynx haven't taken care of business uh, on the road unless they're playing the Los Angeles Sparks, which, right. you know, Lynx fans who have been through it forever, you know, that's, you know, just <laughs> music music to their ears. Uh, it doesn't Beating the Sparks doesn't get old. Um, mm-hmm. But so I yeah, seeing um, them picking up more road wins will be will be crucial to if they can get back in that uh, playoff uh, spot um, or not. Uh, so this point in the schedule, there's a lot of games like you said where if you are a playoff team, the, those five games you at least go four and one in in mm-hmm. that stretch if you want to consider yourself a playoff team. Um, so we'll, but in the process, utterly failing. Okay. Page really- back to Caitlin Clark. I mean, yeah. just unforgivable. Well, listen, we're going to keep <laughs> on talking about the Minnesota Lynx because they are always interesting. Terry Horseman, if you are not following Terry or watching us on YouTube, at T E R R Y H O R S T M A N on Twitter, make sure you're reading all the amazing work that Terry is doing. Uh, thank you to everyone for listening and making us a part of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow. The great Missy Hydrick will be hosting you and we will be with you as always six days a week. So until then, I am Howard Megdahl wishing all of you a wonderful Wednesday. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball.